and welcome back to my sewing vlog The Seaside Sewist. Thank you for everyone who's come over and subscribed up to now. It's lovely to see that there is more than a hundred of you already. I can't quite believe it but thank you. So this vlog is all about my March makes and a few of my favourite things. So the first thing that I made was part of the Minerva Ambassador team and it was so sewn McCall's so I made the McCall's M8027 shirt and I made version C and I believe I made the size 10 in this so the the version that I made had the panels cuffs but then you can roll them up and they've got the this little bit that you can clip on collar and snaps how did I get on sewing my first big four pattern brutally honest brutally honest I absolutely loved this pattern I loved it now I don't know whether it is a beginner pattern or not it doesn't say it doesn't say but I loved it I don't know what else to say I loved it it's not as holding your hand as an indie pattern company so I don't think it's for beginners maybe not even for advanced beginners maybe am I an advanced beginner I think maybe I am so for example certain things in the instructions that it doesn't tell you to do are things like finish off all the pieces first on your overlocker before you start assembling it um, it'll tell you to do one sleeve but then it doesn't say and now do the next sleeve which I th know these things are pretty self-explanatory but where in an indie pattern it tells you exactly each step this doesn't one of the steps I think it completely missed out was attaching the shoulder seams because it's got you can't really tell here but it's got like a false a false bit there that's actually just sewn onto the the shirt that you did that bit and you constructed it sort of all on the flat the back pieces the side panels the front panels but at no point did it actually tell you to sew the shoulder seams it was only when you looked at the diagram on the next step that you could see that they'd been sewn together so I think with a big four pattern company you kind of need to read a few steps ahead and then do your step and then read a few steps ahead um, I made this in a flannel Robert Kaufman grey and white checked flannel which is really cosy um, and I went for the size 10 because I wanted it to be slightly oversized so I could wear it over leggings with maybe a vest top underneath um, this is the finished garment and I just love the method of the whole thing each panel that you put on so it had a back panel and two front panels but then a side panel and each time that you sewed a piece together you top stitched on both sides so it was quite methodical there was a lot of new things in there that I hadn't done before so it was only my second collar but I'd never done a collar stand um, I had to put the pockets on and try and pattern match best I could I'd never put a cuff on anything before um, I did have quite a large mistake on this so I did the bodice did one of the arms and put that in 
the other arm just would not go in. I'm saying arm, I mean sleeve. The other sleeve just would not go in. And when I took a step back from it, I'd cut two sleeves the same. So instead of a right and a left, I'd cut. It was either two rights or two lefts. So I kind of panicked because I was on a bit of a deadline with this being a Minerva Ambassador project and this project needing to be finished and the blog post needs to be up in March. I panicked and ordered some more fabric. Before the fabric arrived, I thought I'm stupid because I think if I'd have undone the sleeve pieces and flipped them because they're the same the patterns the same on each side then that would have worked I think I'd sewn the pieces the wrong way around if that makes sense anyway I just I, I read the sleeve in, and inserted it and then as you can see I put the um, silver snaps down the front on the pockets on the cuffs and then the bit that goes further up where you can turn it over and clip it up so do you know what? I think I saw more patterns from the big four pattern companies I know I know but I, I really enjoyed it so my next make in April was the made by me patterns hoodie so this is the pattern I bought this on Etsy and if you remember in my very first vlog I think it was about my March plans I was making my friend's little boy who was three on his birthday a hoodie from some remnants I bought a piece of digger remnant fabric from first for fabrics and then I had some navy french terry which I ran out of so I then had to add the arms um, in a grey sweatshirt and that I had but he absolutely loved it and as you can see here I think it looks really good so I did enjoy making that one and now for a few of my favourite things that I've been loving in the month of March the first two things are apps that I've been loving and the first app is Readly. So I'll put a picture of the app icon here. Now Readly is a subscription. It's $7.99 a month and for that you can read as many magazines and as many newspapers that are stored on there as, as you want and there is a lot. I discovered Readly when I was paying $8.99, $9.99 for sewing magazines. Sewing magazines are fantastic because you get the pattern with them but the, uh, the patterns were just going into my stash. I've sold some on, I've gifted some, I've given some to charity shops so that just wasn't working for me. So for $7.99 a month I can read my top three sewing magazines. I can also, now that I'm back into cross-stitching, I can read the cross-stitching magazines, any beauty magazines that I want to read. But the fantastic thing about it is you get access to all back issues. So the back issues of the cross-stitching magazines are fantastic. The charts are all there, so you can screenshot the charts to use at a later date. So I am loving this. So $7.99 a month for me is fantastic value. So I'm loving that. The second app that I'm loving is called Borrow Box. Now in lockdown, I really got back into my reading. Always been into reading from being a kid. Really got back into my reading. And I was buying the Kindle books that were 99p. There's always 99p Kindle books. And I was happy with that. Borrow Box is a library app. So you need to register with your local library. You can go along to your library and do this or you can actually register with them online which is what I did. That generates an ID number that you then 
put into borrow box to set that up you get up to five ebooks at a time and four audio books on loan like a library so you choose a book you loan it I think it's for 14 days but you can extend that then when you finish reading it you send it back to the e-library that's it's completely free so anybody that is into reading or wants to maybe save a bit of money this is an absolutely fantastic app so I'm loving that as well and the last thing that I am loving is food related and I need to tell you about a fantastic new company that I've discovered and it's Doughboy Donuts. Now Doughboy Donuts is based in, they've got three branches, Castleford, Wakefield and Leeds and they do the best donuts. My husband travels the country with work so he's in Yorkshire quite often so he brought home two vegan donuts for me to try. Um, I can't eat dairy so he bought me two vegan donuts and they were the most delicious and huge donuts that I'd ever eaten. So if you live in that area or you can get there visit Doughboy Donuts you won't be disappointed. So that is it for this vlog. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this and please subscribe so you can see more content. Until next time, bye!